Last year, I experienced the New York City Marathon as a spectator. This year, I've got a bib. So it's time to hop on a plane and head east. This is a runner's weekend in New York City. I started my New York City Marathon weekend early on a Thursday. I hopped in a cab to head directly to Tracksmith to check out their new pop-up space. This year it was in Brooklyn, which it turned out was super easy to get to by train and faster and cheaper than the taxi that I took to get there. Featured in the space was the Elliott Trainer, a double p daily shoe that I'm still waiting to get my hands on. It is a beautiful shoe that I have a lot of questions about. Then there was the New York City Collection Apparel, which I think looks the best out of all the majors that they've created specific merch for. I think it helps that it's in my favorite colors of black and gray. It's not very tracksmith, but it's oh so very good. They also had arm sleeves, which I don't think I've ever seen in person before from tracksmith. I really should have picked up a pair because it will eventually get cold later this year. But I think the reason I didn't at the time was because it was just so unseasonably hot this weekend. After I left, I made a quick stop by the water to get a midday look at Midtown Manhattan and shoot some B-roll and then I grabbed a slice of pizza before I hopped on the train back to Central Park. I was finally able to check into my hotel room a little bit after 4 p.m. Took a shower to clean up, and then I got ready to host a panel with professional athletes Emma Bates and Lindsay Flanagan and Run Girl co-founder Dominique Burton. The panel was held in a beautiful hall in the Museum of Art and Design. All right. They put me in charge of this room. And I don't have a lot of footage of the actual panel because I was trying to be a professional and not, you know, like a silly YouTuber. But I did sneak in a brief video while I was on stage. It was a privilege to host this panel and interview all three of these incredibly impressive women. Afterward, the crowd lined up for selfies with the panel members, and I had a chance to meet five-time U.S. Olympian Abdi Abdurrahman. From there, we headed across the street to Fleet Feet, where we went on a dark shakeout run through Central Park. Since it was Thursday and several days before the marathon that I was training through anyway, I decided I would take the ASICS Super Blast and join the eight minute per mile pace group. Turns out they wanted to go a little bit faster than eight minutes per mile. And they also decided to go on a loop that ended up being about 4.7 miles. Very different than the 5K and 10 minute per mile shakeouts that I tend to prefer. I'm guessing none of them were also running the marathon in a few days. After the run, there was food from Smash Burger and some beverages as well. I had a bean burger that was delicious and some tater tots. In my opinion, tater tots are a very underrated food. everybody it is a little bit after 6 30 in the morning here in new york city friday of marathon weekend first thing i need to do today is gonna be a big day let's get some coffee and some breakfast so well, let's do that It 
is about eight o'clock now out of the hotel room and I'm gonna head to my first of two shakeouts today and then head over to the Bandit pop-up shop grand opening and shakeout. It's only 12 of us, very small company, uh, putting in a lot of work trying to bring great running apparel, great lifestyle apparel uh, to New York City from Brooklyn um, and having a great time doing it this year. Bandit running, pop up, grand opening, and shake out. Super fun time. Lots of really great gear down there. Um, a beautiful intersection of running and art. They just do it so well over there. Now, I'm gonna head over to Central Park, Rumsey Playfields, and I'm gonna meet up with my buddy Corey. If you guys are local to this area, you guys know Corey, because he's on TV. He's on Channel 11 on the news. Um, but for the rest of you guys, you might know him from his YouTube channel, Corey Runs. We're gonna get out there. We've been meaning to do a sit-down interview together for a little while now. I think today, this week, we'll make it happen. How's it going? Yeah, sorry I'm running a little bit late. No worries. You know, I thought I was... Uh, How you doing, man? Good. How are you? Doing all right. You know, I thought I was doing good on time, so I stopped to get a coffee, and then next thing you know, I'm 10 minutes late. Oh, you're so I'm that, I'm that jerk. Just finished up the interview with Corey that are you showing up on his channel soon. If it is already, I uh, will post links to it down below. Now, I think I have just the right amount of time to head back over to Columbus Circle, which is not that far from here. I think it's about maybe a half mile from here. So I'm just gonna walk over and get ready for the shakeout ride. <laughs> this How's is going. Cool. This is our first time running together, Corey. Yeah, I know. This is fantastic. This is nice. All right, this is what it looks like when you take an entire group run the wrong way. <laughs> so I really didn't get us lost, lost per se. I just missed the turn that we were supposed to take. And then the turn we did take ended up being a dead end. So we had to double back a little bit, but everyone was a pretty good sport about it. And it didn't add too much to our overall route anyway. 3.22 miles total with a nine minute, 11 second per mile average. Awesome. Yes. Thanks everybody. All right, let's go inside, get some beverages, some water, hey. stay hydrated. There's some beers too, if you're, yeah, actually, you, this guy's interested. Yeah, all right, yeah. let's get inside guys.
After we left the shakeout run, we hopped on another train and headed over to the Javits Center so we could pick up our bibs at the New York City Marathon Expo. And let me tell you what, I know that this is a big race, but this expo was really massive. Man, there's a lot of stuff here. This is a giant expo. I've never seen one this big before. Like, this is just, the New Balance space here is enormous. I've never seen anything like it. So much stuff here. Picking up our bibs was really fast and really smooth, especially considering just how many people and bibs they had to get through. We eventually made it through the entire New Balance space, which is just kind of like this front half area here. It took a really long time to get out of it. And really the New Balance space itself is as big as most other races, entire expo spaces. But after you got out of that space, then you could see kind of like the other stuff that there was to see at this expo. We were getting pretty tired at this point of the day, so we didn't stop at any one booth for very long, just kind of quickly made our way through the expo. And then on our way out, we ran into the Believe in the Run crew. It's always good to see them, and they were all in really good spirits. After we left the Javits Center, Drew and I split up. The plan was to freshen up at our respective hotels and then head back out. Time is 5.50 all showered up, recharged the phone a little bit, recharged all the camera batteries. Although I don't know how much more I'll need tonight because heading out to dinner with Drew, we're gonna grab some pizza, I think, and then we're gonna head over to Tracksmith, but it's gonna be more of a, like an evening thing and you guys know how I feel about filming, like the evening things, everyone's there to kick back, relax, no one wants to be filmed, so maybe I'll show you guys a little bit, but it could be a uh, short night filming wise, but first, Let's get some food. everybody it is a little bit after 8 a.m. here in Central Park New York City heading over now to scope out my spot to watch the USATF 5k championship the avid dash of the finish line 5k the men will start off somewhere over that way I think I think uh, in about 25 minutes women start in about 30 minutes Last year, I was able to get some really great footage of the racers coming down the hill in Central Park. I'm gonna try to do the same thing today. I'm gonna do a little bit of a warm up before this race starts, even though I'm not racing. But if I'm gonna try and film and keep up with some of these racers, even for the 200 meters that I can maybe tops keep up with them, I don't wanna pull anything for, before the marathon tomorrow. So I gotta get at least a little bit warm. Everywhere you go this weekend, no matter pretty much any time of day, there's always a large group of people running together. There's also like people running in small groups and by themselves, like I'm running by myself, but like there's just giant groups of people everywhere. Hey guys. All right, we got some, I think these are youth races. It's 8.32. Men should be stepping off pretty soon, right? Yep. 8.30? 8.30. We got Kurt here. What's going on? We're going to watch this race. <laughs> it's going to be a fast one, I think. We're coming in hot.
All right, guys, so just posted up a couple of quick pics, some still frames from the videos that I took to Instagram. And now I'm running late to Hella's Shakeout Run. It's nine o'clock, that's when it starts, but I'm like maybe half a mile away. So hopefully they're gonna get a little bit of a late start. Okay, I see the store and I see a bunch of people. So I think I'm okay. I'm gonna make it. Yo, look at this guy. What's going on, man? Good How you doing? Wow, man, I'm glad you guys didn't leave yet. Yeah. I was trying to stick around and take Thank you so much for coming. Of course, man. On three, one, two, three. What's up, my beautiful people? And we just want to present you with this to commemorate 2,000 days in a row. Oh. Of Super fun, really great turnout, such great energy. Now we have walked a couple blocks down, heading back to Columbus Circle and New Bounds Fleet Feet spot for the Believe in the Run event. This one's gonna be huge, I think. I'm excited. A swarm of people, there's so many people here. Because I had led a shakeout run in Central Park the day before, Believe in the Run asked if I would lead this giant group of several hundred runners along the same route. I did warn them that I had gotten my much smaller group lost the day prior, and yet somehow I was still put in charge. Temperatures were very warm, but it was good to run with my friends. Soon we were at the point of the route where I made the wrong turn yesterday, but I got it right this time. Then we passed the finish line of the marathon and finished up the run 3.16 miles at 8 minutes 59 seconds per mile. Good job. Oh, oh yeah, it's hot, it's hot. Good job, everybody. High fives. High fives. Nice work, thank you. Good to see you guys. All right. All right, guys. Inside, New Balance provided the space for everyone to hang out, and there was food. I had a pumpernickel bagel, my favorite. And I took so many selfies. At the bar area, some people had beer, but I had a fancy coffee with Megan Featherston. And it was a crowded and definitely a bit overwhelming experience, but it was an incredible time. Thanks to Believe in the Run for organizing such a great event. Later that evening, we all had dinner. At the hotel, there was a pasta buffet, which had good vegetarian and vegan options. It was hotel food and reminded me of my consulting days, but it was exactly the kind of straightforward food you'd want before a marathon. And the company was excellent. In my hotel room, I put together my flat lay for the evening and was asleep before nine. Marathon morning started in the hotel lobby before 5 a.m. Thankfully, we had daylight savings or didn't have daylight savings. I never know which one it is. But either way, we had an extra hour of sleep and everyone was in good spirits as we walked to our bus to head to Staten Island. We had gotten access to a New Balance VIP bus that got us a police escort, which is an amenity that always seems so over the top unnecessary but it's definitely appreciated when you get to drive over the Verrazano Bridge on Marathon Morning and get to see colors like this. The bus dropped us off and we were herded through security and then to a New Balance tent. Inside, it was a runner's haven. 
dry synthetic turf to sit on or stretch out, chairs, tables, protection from the elements, coffee, and food. They say LA traffic's on fame and DC power. Well, New York City worships exclusivity and there's nothing that is more deserving of a velvet rope than your own private porta potty. Is leaving the tent, heading to the corrals. Still more than an hour till we step off, but got to do everything early. There's a lot of people here. It takes a lot of time to do everything, get everyone set up. So we're heading out. You ready? I'm ready. So Ooh. ready. I've already made my New York City Marathon race video, and I'm very happy with how it's turned out. It's also performing well, about 60,000 views in just three days. So here, I'll do a quick race recap instead of showing you that same video again. For shoes, I went with the New Balance Fuel Cell SC Elite 3. I ran a 3.02 marathon in version two at CIM last December, and version three is a much better shoe. It's got more pop with the carbon fiber plate positioning, and there is more fuel cell foam, so it's not bottoming out anymore. My feet felt great the entire race, and I felt like the shoes still had so much spring, even in the later miles. They did get a little bit heavy with all the sweat and all the water that I was pouring on myself because of the knit, but otherwise, this shoe performed exceptionally. I wore a pair of New Balance half tights that had very good side pockets and were pretty thin, which was much appreciated in this heat. And with those half tights, I was able to carry six Martin gels and an extra GoPro battery inside a little plastic baggie. For the singlet, I went with a New York Marathon singlet that New Balance had customized for me. It was risky taking a brand new singlet out on a sweaty day, but there was no chafing and it was surprisingly cool, even though it does not have a large mesh like most of my other favorite singlets. I took gels every four miles and drank Gatorade at pretty much every single aid station. I could feel the heat and humidity affecting me already by mile two. So even at the first aid station, I was taking Gatorade and pouring water on myself. This is something that I didn't even have to do at any of my summer road races. But I just felt so hot and everything felt so difficult right from the outset of this race. By mile eight, I felt like I really needed to back off on the effort if I was going to make it to the finish. And by the halfway point, I was feeling like this had the possibility of turning into a very long day. By mile 18, I decided to walk through all the remaining aid stations. I had backed off the pace enough that this wasn't strictly necessary, but I tried to remember that I still had another marathon to race in just another four weeks. So I thought I would take it easy on myself and make sure that I took in extra fluids whenever I had a chance. This was my first New York City Marathon, and it is more impressive in person than any video can really convey. But two things really stand out to me the most. The first is the crowds. There is so much energy and love coming from the streets, and it is incredibly uplifting. The second thing that really stands out to me is that I was somehow able to find so many people that I knew. This race is one of the biggest in the world. And yet, over and over again, I was able to find people, even though we were all running different paces and have different abilities. It's one of those things that makes you understand that we are all truly connected in ways that we do not understand. But. I felt that connection that day, and it is real. And it is an essential part of that New York City Marathon magic. After the race, I somehow found Drew, even though he finished way ahead of me. And together, we made the very long waddle through the finish zone. The race ponchos that they give out at this race are the nicest I've ever experienced and I can't imagine how important they'd be on a seasonably cold day. 
The carnage of this hot race was apparent in this post-race march, and a lot of people were struggling. Eventually, we were able to leave the race and found Tommy Runs, and I got a chance to meet his mom, who is delightful. Then, Drew and I went back to the finish area to catch some of our friends as they crossed the finish line, and then we eventually tried to get back to our hotel. People were everywhere, and no one could move quickly, even if they wanted to. But eventually, we were able to get back, get showered, and then start heading out to uh, refuel and rehydrate. We all wore our medals proudly and started a very fun, very long evening. Now, like I said earlier, I don't like to do a lot of filming once it gets dark, but trust me when I tell you, we were all in celebratory mood. The New York City Marathon is an incredible race, but it is also so much more than that. It has the gravity to draw people together. It has the power to unite. It creates new opportunities and it reunites old friends. This is not just a race. It's one of the best weekends you'll ever experience as a runner. What's going on?